Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, uh, yes, please. Let's learn. Building a, a cathedral without science or mathematics, the engineering method explained. Original link to the video, top of the description, below that link to the Discord, would love to have you. Let's go. This structure built some 12,000 years ago, that's 6,000 years before Stonehenge, 5,000 years before the first pyramid, highlights that for millennia, humans have used the engineering method to solve problems long before the rise of science. In this video, I define and illustrate the essence of the engineering method. This is Gobekli Tepe, an ancient ruin in southeastern Turkey. Stone structures cover nine hectares, about 18 football fields. Filled with circular rooms, its purpose remains a mystery. Embedded in the stone walls of the rooms are decorative T-shaped pillars. Carved into the pillars are lions, bears, wild boars, lizards, spiders, and surprisingly, ducks. Not only are the stones beautifully carved, they are placed with precision. To see the degree of precision, look at the circular room I showed you initially. At the center are the remains of two T-pillars the tops fell off long ago. If we look at this room from above, keep your eye on the two central pillars highlighted in red, you see two circular rooms nearby, which each have the same arrangement of pillars at their center. The pillars in the two rooms at the bottom sit on a line with little deviation. If we locate the exact centers between the pillars and the two lower circles and connect them to the center of pillars in the circle above, we inscribe an equilateral triangle. Its sides deviate less than 1.5% from perfection. This is unlikely to be coincidental, nor the result of some self-organization. My point is that these stones are erected in a purposefully designed layout, not haphazard, that responds to societal needs which means that Gobekli Tepe is an engineered object. The people of Gobekli Tepe created all this by applying the engineering method, the method we still use today. Yet this powerful method, the engineering method, is an all but hidden process that few of us have heard of, let alone understand, even though it influences every aspect of our lives. In this video series, I explore the essence of that engineering method the age of Gobekli Tepe highlights that the engineering method long predates science, which conflicts with a commonplace notion that engineering somehow arises from the scientific method. So I start by asking, do engineers need science? And here's the answer. Sure, it helps. But... This is a model of Saint Chapelle a stunning 13th century building built nearly 12,000 years after Gobekli Tepe. Saint Chapelle was designed and constructed by a team who had never learned basic arithmetic or the geometry taught today in third grade, let alone anything we'd call science. In fact, they had no standardized length because a foot varied from region to region. The medieval engineers aspired to create a building that celebrated a spiritual world by streaming light through the structure's walls. Sunlight was transformed by the stained glass windows into a diffuse red blue and gold that glimmers on the chapel sculptures and gilded arches. To create these stunning displays of light, to house these giant stained glass windows that, are gold, that glimmers on the chapel sculptures and gilded arches. To create these stunning displays of light, to house these giant stained glass windows, they built vast walls by constructing spectacularly high ceilings. How do these engineers, called masons, know how to carve a cathedral's thousands of building blocks to create when assembled not only beauty, but also stability? Like all great engineers, they drew on past knowledge. They used an architectural element that originated in present-day Pakistan. Notice that saint Chapelle has, as do all cathedrals, pointed arches, some six on the front, at least ten on each side, and on the back, six more. And of course, many pointed arches support the ceiling. They chose this pointed arch over the arch used in the Romans' extraordinary pantheon. Guys, I just, there's a, I'm muting the thing over there. Distracting. And of course, many pointed arches support the ceiling. 
They chose this pointed arch over the arch used in the Romans' extraordinary pantheon, built about 1,400 years before Sainte-Chapelle. The pantheon, typical of all Imperial Roman architecture, features a semicircular arch. It is exactly half of a circle. If a medieval engineer used a semicircular Roman arch to construct a soaring cathedral, it would cover entire city blocks and use so much stone that the cost would skyrocket. The savings from using a pointed arch instead of a semicircular arch can be seen clearly by comparing Saint Chapelle with the Pantheon. Note how Saint Chapelle is nearly the same height as the Pantheon, yet just a little over a third as wide. This Roman semicircular arch was rejected by medieval engineers because its width has to grow proportionally to its height. To see the problem, consider a semicircular arch that is 10 meters in width. It is five meters in height because it's half of a circle. So its height is half of the diameter. Now, if I double the span covered from 10 meters to 20 meters. I'm assuming it's that they figured out I, I feel like I see archways that aren't half the diameter tall, but maybe I'm wrong. Is it because if it were more than half, then it would buckle where it starts to turn inward? And if it were less than half, then it could buckle outward, and you want it to transfer the weight right when it's kind of the circle is like flat, uh, like going right down into the stone? Or now, if I double the span covered from 10 meters to 20 meters, you see that the height is now 10 meters. It is doubled. Contrast this to the pointed arch. As the arch increases in height, the span covered can stay the same because the shape of the arch can change as its height increases. Although medieval engineers didn't adopt the Roman semicircular arch, from the Romans, they inherited the key idea that enabled them to build their stunning cathedrals that have stood for centuries. We can see it in this arch from Saint Chapelle. To support this arch, the medieval similar thing, uh, like when I go over a bridge, like a, a a cable bridge, you know that that has the cables. It seems like this, like a Golden Gate Bridge, perfect example. It, it seems like it has uses the same concept. I think. I, in I'm no engineer. I'm just fascinated by this stuff. This arch from Saint Chapelle. To support this arch, the medieval engineers had to correctly size the thickness of this wall. If this wall were too thin, the weight of the arch would buckle the wall. The structure would collapse. If too thick, stone would be wasted at a huge cost, and the desired open space inside the cathedral diminished. To size the wall, the medieval builder used a rule that created the stable, semicircular arches of the Pantheon. A stable arch results when the supporting wall's thickness is between a fourth or a fifth of the arch's span. If an arch's span was of the Pantheon, a stable arch results when the supporting wall's thickness is between a fourth or a fifth of the arch's span. If an arch's span were this long, then you divide it into about four equal parts and use one of these to size the wall's thickness. But there's a problem with applying this proportional rule. The Masons knew no mathematics, nor, as I've said, they even have a ruler. So this rule was not a calculation, but was instead an action. The Mason would have a life-size chalk drawing of the interior of this arch on the floor of the drawing room. No, instead, I've drawn the interior of a pointed arch on a large sheet of paper. In addition to this arch drawing or template, you need a piece of string. The mason would have used a rope. I need to drape it over the arch, so I'll insert map pins along the arch to support the string. The mason would have done this on the floor, so he would simply lay the down. rope on top of his drawing. Now, drape the rope over the arch. Now pull it. Mark the string at the base of the arch. Oh. Then cut the string so it's only as long as the arch. Okay, never mind. Next, lay the string on the ground and fold it into thirds. I've marked the thirds with pink tape here. The mason would have used colored chalk. That thirds isn't obvious, but it will get us to a wall thickness of about a fourth or a fifth. With the rope now marked into three sections of equal length, Return it to its original place along the arch template. 
we see that this divides the arch into three equal sections. Let's mark one of them. Then pin one end of a new string to that marked spot. Draw it taut and pin it to the base of the arch. We need to attach to the base a length of string exactly equal to the distance from the spot a third of the way along the arch to the base. So I just fold the rope and mark it. <clears throat> we need to attach to the base a length of string exactly equal to the distance from the spot a third of the way along the arch to the base. So I just fold the rope and mark it. And then draw that taut and in a straight line with the pen section. Then pin it to the base. The distance from that pin to the inner line is the width of the wall, which will be between a fourth and a fifth of the arch's span. Let's compare it to the arch section from Sainte Chapelle. If I superimpose it on the string construction, you can see that it matches. It's puzzling that we divided the arch into three sections, which yield a width between a fourth and a fifth, but that's just how the geometry works out. That's part of the rule. I've never worked out why geometrically that works, because it doesn't matter. The mason would never have worked it out analytically. What matters, and that's the point here, is that it works. And to belabor the point a bit, it's the same rule the Romans used to size their supporting walls. So uh, he's essentially saying that, that math isn't necessary because of a few... Th so is he saying that math is essentially just a shortcut so we don't have to do these sort of things. And so it's like the chicken or the egg. It seems like engineering came before math and that math was just an easier way to, to like, uh, to explain it and do it analytically rather than, than physically like, all right, here, 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 equal lengths. That's a third. So is that the kind of big message of the video so far? Am, am I right there? Divide the interior of a Roman semicircular arch into three equal sized sections. Draw a line from one of these third markings to the base of the arch, then double it. And you see the wall size of a bit less than a fourth of the interior arch's span. With that rule, we have arrived at the core of the engineering method. The proportional rule doesn't come from some scientific analysis of stone and its properties. It comes from centuries of experience, from trial and error. It's called a rule of thumb, more formally, a heuristic. An imprecise method used as a shortcut to find the solution to a problem, often by narrowing the range of possible solutions. Here, a mason sized the wall's width in a matter of minutes without understanding the fundamental material properties of stone and without understanding the mathematics needed to apply the rule. That's a paradigm for the engineering method. Solving problems using rules of thumb it caused the best change in a poorly understood situation using available resources. Trial and error. That's a sharp contrast with the scientific method because these rules of thumb are only guides that offer a high probability of success but no guarantee. And unlike a scientific theory, a rule of thumb is never in a sense disproved. That hundreds of cathedrals are still around today, standing for eight or 900 years is proof of that. Instead of being disproved, this rule of thumb for stone became outdated, not wrong, as iron and steel I-beams replaced stone. Yet no doubt there's a question in your mind. I've talked about buildings constructed eight or so centuries ago, so surely you might wonder, is engineering based on rules of thumb antiquated in our scientific age? That line of thought misunderstands the purpose of the engineering method, which is to solve practical problems before we have full scientific knowledge. In the next video, I'll explore how engineers work their way around that lack of scientific understanding, how they overcome uncertainty. I'm Bill Hammack, The Engineer Guy. PhD. Thank you very much, Bill. So, a uh, really cool video. Am I, I'm going to subscribe if I'm not. I already am. Okay, good. So, uh, again, I, I'm sure you, you were my ADHD probably got a bit annoying or just my attention span
Uh, but w- one of the things I, I and, and it's easier in in hindsight, obviously, but it seems like the arch. Mm, it. it it seems like an arch is just an elevated dome, not not just. Like, part of me is wondering, how didn't Romans figure this out? But I know that that's a silly question when it's, you know, it's easy for someone in this to say, oh, how can you figure that out? But it seems like not that big of a leap. Um... But again, when you don't, when it's not readily available, and you got to think of it yourself, it's a whole different story. Um. Yeah, I, I, I think people. We. I think people are a lot smarter in the past than we give it credit for. I think. We are essentially the same, you know, brain capacity wise, and uh, that we have a tendency in this age of, you know machinery and technology to be like how did they do that well we've met we live in a time where we're living post-industrial revolution we have all this stuff and and it's if you just go out into the forest right if you just have some people go out into the forest and never have any training or learning they're gonna learn how to do some stuff and i i feel like we would be amazed if we took away everything at just what we could do without certain technology it goes for the pyramids and stuff where which are extremely fascinating and i like different theories of how they were built unless you're going to suggest aliens then stop please uh but how i feel like saying like saying something is made by aliens is such a cop-out it's just like uh i don't know aliens that's it move on no Okay, and you might be thinking, well, who thinks it's aliens? I think a lot of people think the pyramids were built uh, with the help of aliens. And ah, okay, I'm getting carried away. Uh, I'm up earlier than I usually am. I'm sort of tired, but uh, I don't know. That that was fun. I love videos like this, engineering videos. Hope you guys are doing well. If you could answer any of the questions I had or tell me if I was wrong somewhere, probably was. Uh, That'd be great. Love to see it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.